the most important part was the the western red cedar for the planking but equally important was the douglas fir douglas fir is for the center line the keelson And this is the sea. This video is about the building of my 52-foot yacht Ahaluna. She is built of wood, therefore acquiring that wood is the prime important uh, issue. And I was very fortunate. A good friend of mine had become vice president of a very large lumber corporation headquartered in Vancouver with uh, warehouses all across the nation. And he offered to procure all the Douglas fir for me, old growth, uh, two by tens for the Keelson, two by sixes for the cheeks on the bulkheads, and two by fours for the massive floor timber laminations, and also, of course, the most important, the planking of western red cedar, all of it old growth, and the Douglas fir was of exceptional uh, quality, super fine grain and extremely straight. You could use every single plank as a straight edge, absolutely zero warp, straight edge quality. So once I received all this wood, it was time for construction, start to build. And I started with the transom. The transom is made up of five layers of 3 8 plywood. I made a form of 2 by 12 massive timbers to the radius of 8 feet. That is the radius of the transom. And so the form is made with that radius and the 3 8 plywood is laminated uh, together there. First is three sheets, one in the center, two in the sides, 12 feet across. And then the other four layers with all the joints staggered. And I made uh, clamping two by fours uh, out of local pine uh, with camber. If you clamp on each end uh, with the camber, it applies pressure uh, along the whole length. Whereas if you just clamped a, a, a straight two by four each end, it would only clamp a foot or so on each end. Worked out perfectly. After that, it was time to build the, the bulkheads. Uh, this is where the bulk of the, uh, the three-quarter inch plywood went. Uh, and what you do is you assemble plywood, spice it together to the size of the bulkhead before you transpose uh, any drawing on it. And uh, the way that is done, uh, you spline uh, two sheets together. Uh, you got your three-quarter inch plywood and you mortis, mortis three-eighths uh, in, three-quarter inch deep into each uh, plywood and then you cut a strip of inch and a half uh, three-eighths plywood you glue this and put it into each side put it together clamp it uh, across with huge pipe clamps up to 16 feet the beauty of pipe clamps you just screw them together you can go forever for length and also clamp them with the cambered, cambered uh, two by fours and so now you have uh, uh, the assembled plywood for a particular bulkhead and uh, here you apply the only part of the drawings that is full size. Conventional, traditional boat building in wood uh, requires full size lofting. That's how traditionally it was done. But Michel, the architect, said quarter, in, quarter size is perfectly adequate. You are capable of that position uh, effortlessly. So I did the, the, the major lofting quarter size. The, the major lofting consists of three views. The plan view from overhead, you see all the water lines. And then the profile view, stem uh, and the keelson, transom and the shear line. And then the final view is uh, the sections, which is easily compared with slicing bread, all, all the shapes of the stations. And once you have those three major drawings, you mark where the bulkheads are, and now you have to measure the bulkheads on these drawings. Uh, the offsets for the bulkheads are done in that you have your center line and you have your water lines and you you measure the offsets like this 
and then you lay a pattern around here and that is the shape of your bulkhead the shape of your vessel so this is the only thing you draw full size only half a bulkhead now your plywood is assembled and you put the drawing which is um, building paper taped together you put that precisely onto the uh, spliced uh, plywood perfectly lined up with the center line and the proper height fasten it down and then you trace the outline with a spiked wheel like dressmakers use for their patterns and once that is done you flip it over to the other side carefully align center line and, and height and you do the same thing you follow those perforations and now you have both sides you got the whole bulkhead drawn to perfect symmetry some people neglect to do that and I know someone who neglected to, to do that and you end up with an asymmetrical hull not too cool anyhow it worked out absolutely perfectly and once the bulkhead uh, is afterwards cut to that line you attach the two by six fur uh, cheeks to the underside, not where the drawing is. The drawing is on the largest face of the bulkhead. And you attach the two by six cheeks so they just uh, flush at the maximum dimension. They are glued and screwed. And now you cut with a circular saw, you cut the excess uh, wood off the cheeks and uh, you're ready except for the legs you make temporary legs for the bulkheads these are pieces of plywood sort of like this which you attach at waterline 12. the base of the keel is waterline zero and so on the bulkhead you mark uh, you measure uh, it's because it's beyond the bulkhead you only measure to waterline 12 and and that's the height of these temporary legs which are eight foot uh, wide at the outside made to fit on the frame that we had built uh, the, the frame for the boat building is uh, like a strong back in construction boat but we just call it a frame made of double two by four a pine on each side eight feet wide on the outside with some uh, diagonals for stability and on this frame we have precisely marked measured and marked the position of the bulkheads after all the bulkheads were built we stand them up uh, on the side of the uh, the shed and uh, now it's time to put all these bulkheads into place on top of the frame for this occasion which required quite a bit of muscle because the big bulkheads are very very heavy by this time so a uh, perfect occasion to invite all my friends on a saturday as usual and they came out and we did the the chore we, we placed them precisely on these marks we braced them with two by threes and two by fours to each other and so on with staging nails staging nails are temporary nails they have two heads the one head uh, just holds the lumber as a conventional nail does and the second head protrudes to allow a claw hammer to to pull it out they're temporary nails so now all the bulkheads and the transom are put into place and after that we have a great dinner and, and party with my friends and uh, it's always a, a, a time for celebration for such a major advance afterwards it took me about three months to uh, line up these bulkheads to absolute perfection i had set myself uh, tolerances of three sixteenths of an inch that's uh, about one and a half millimeters they were not demanded by michelle the architect or anywhere else that i knew but i set that for myself and i also uh, on waterline 10 on all the bulkheads I drilled a hole large enough for a hundred foot measuring tape and I had a, this hundred foot measuring tape very taut stretching from stem to transom through this waterline 10 hole uh, permitting perfect lineup perfect distancing it was of a great help so like I say really fixing the, the bulkheads perfectly plumb perfectly square equidistant 
in, in all areas to the other bulkheads measured squarely. Uh, it was quite a chore, quite tedious at time, but very, very satisfying. After that, it's time to uh, to do the shear clamp. The shear that that, that t now we're starting to tie things together. The shear clamp is a lamination of three one by fours, and the the stem the stem is only the inner stem. By the way, it's two layers of three quarter inch plywood, and two more layers of uh, two by sixes, all glued and screwed together. And uh, you have the stem notched for the shear clamp and also the transom and every bulkhead. The shear clamp is where the deck meets the hull. Uh, th this is the, the, the hull and you have the, the three laminated uh, one by fours here and the deck here for fastening this way and that way. It's called the shear clamp. And once that is in place, the next thing, uh, which is a uh, pretty tough chore by now is uh, the keelson. The keelson is made up of two 2x10s Douglas fir. Uh, and now comes the tricky part of the planking, the, the, the most tedious and precision requiring job, and that's planing for the roundness of the hull. That means after we leave the shear clamp, the third or fourth plank, we have to we put a new plank on two by two which is actually an inch and a half by inch and a half true we clamp it onto the cheek on the bulkheads and then we knock it down gently so it touches the previous plank now on the outside you have a bit of a gap because of the roundness of the hull now we take a, a small compass and measure that uh, gap and transpose it on the inside and, and make a mark with a pencil. And we have to do that every foot or 18, in, 18 inches for the length of the plank. Now we take the plank off, put it on the workbench, the, the planing bench. The planing bench was uh, done to exactly what Michelle suggested for the best uh, planing uh, uh, capability is one fist under your elbow when you're standing. That's a perfect height to plane do all that planing. So now you're planing to these marks. It requires very precise planing. The plane has to have a, a slightly slightly convex blade uh, because you have to be dead flat or slightly slightly concave uh, on the planing surface because you cannot have any camber, every, anything convex. So tedious job. And uh, on a good day we could get one strake on. A strake means one layer all around the boat on a very good day. We tried to get beyond that. We never ever succeeded. So anyhow, we, uh, we settled down for this. And uh, afterwards, we also have to shape the planks fore and aft to make them narrower to accommodate the, the, the girth, the belly of the beast. So you take an inch and a half plank uh, at the widest part, for instance, and you take it down uh, to, uh, to maybe inch and a quarter at first, and then uh, one inch. And similarly, later when you use uh, two and a half by one and a half uh, inch planks, you, you start at the fattest part is two and a half inches, and you may taper that down to one inch at each end. You do that with a saw square, and then you have to plane that so it's smooth and then you put it on and then you go through the marking uh, process I just told you and take it down and, and plane for the bevel to get rid of the gap on the outside. Very tedious job. It took both of us an entire year to do the planking. Uh, we got uh, a bit tired of it because <laughs> you like to move on to a different subject variety uh, is the spice of life. If you do the same thing uh, for a whole year, it got uh, quite boring and tedious, but we did it. We uh, persisted. And let me tell you, when it was time for the whiskey plank, let me explain a whiskey plank. <laughs> the whiskey plank is the last plank, so-called because that means a celebration. 
and uh, let me tell you that Whiskey Plank went in there with great fanfare and we had a great party after that celebrating being relieved of this incredibly complex tedious lengthy planking job but the end result was absolutely impeccable and nice very very nice what I did I asked Michel if he would come up from New Zealand uh, Michel w was a super uh, fiberglass expert uh, right from the beginning he built uh, water tanks for the Vancouver Aquarium he made fiberglass sculptures for the uh, Vancouver uh, Aquarium apart from uh, glassing his uh, magic dragon of course so uh, he he had no problem coming up so I, I flew him up from New Zealand to Montreal we picked him up at the Montreal airport in the evening and drove him out to the country uh, to my place and we had a wonderful evening but the next day I had to go to work into the big city just for the day thank God uh, nothing else for the next couple of weeks that Michelle was here for and that first day of Michelle being there uh, he had Ross to help him and the first thing he did is he used a very long batten 22 foot batten to check for fairness the entire hull for uh, for fairness and he found absolutely no unfairness whatsoever nothing to take off nothing to build up perfectly fair we were immensely proud Ross and I and then they spent the rest of the day uh, ras rounding the the, um, the corner of transom to to planking because that was a hard corner where the planks ended so they rounded that with uh, with uh, wraps uh, rough sand or whatever I don't know uh, for radius for the glass um, better to lay over the corner and they actually they wraps the entire hull uh, with coarse rasps the, the red cedar is soft and lends itself very easily to be rasped like that and that lets the uh, resin uh, get a really good grip uh, on the red cedar so we we glassed uh, I had bought uh, all the glass from an industrial supplier not a store six drums of polyester resin one drum of styrene one drum of uh, uh, acetone for cleaning up and uh, Michelle uh, did an incredible job uh, w with everything temperature control uh, styrene added and uh, agitated uh, the resin because it had been sitting in the barrels we did that with a little air horn air compressor bubbling to to move the resin it worked out absolutely beautifully he he mixed all the batches and he told us how to roll <laughs> you only roll this way you don't roll longitudinally you 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 make flat spots oh you know that kind of thing new to us but so logical of course you know so you only roll this way not longitudinally it worked out extremely well and uh, we were finished in 12 days of glassing and uh, I took uh, later on I took core samples uh, from having drilled for through hull fittings I took uh, core samples to the engineer I was dealing with at, at the supplier and he uh, measured the thickness of the glass uh, and I told him all the layers to say it was very hard to analyze precisely mat and roving mat and roving mat and roving mat and cloth stretched and uh, he said that's the perfect lamination uh, the thickness that those layers should be not resin poor not resin resin rich absolutely perfect and the good thing about building upside down glassing upside down is you don't end up puddling any uh, resin which is not good any any resin saturation is not good resin on its own is brittle no no holding power and that is a, a, a bit of a situation with laying up hulls in a in a female mold uh, 
if you don't take care uh, with a thixotropic agent or so and the resin decides to, to puddle, you end up resin rich near the bottom, which should be the strongest. Anyhow, none of that. It worked out perfectly. So we were very, very, very pleased uh, with the job. I was so happy to have Michelle there. We spent the evenings uh, deciding on all kinds of details, mostly uh, diesel plumbing. There's seven fuel tanks. He suggested all, all the right uh, moves there and uh, all kinds of engineering details, which I had not had yet. So uh, being able to sit with him every evening uh, for, for two weeks was absolutely priceless, wonderful. So I was very happy with that. By the way, we went, uh, th there was a party of our friends in, in the big city in Montreal at one point after we were finished. And we all uh, went, um, all, all four of us, I, I hired one more guy, one of my uh, film crew. We were four of us uh, doing the glassing. Michelle, myself, uh, Ross and Jakob. So there was, uh, was a party uh, at a friend's place in, in Montreal. So we drove in for the party. <laughs> and everybody told us that we we smelt like uh, like fiberglass. <laughs> now comes the exciting part of uh, 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 at this phase, and that's turning the beautiful hull right side up. Michelle had made a drawing for me how to do it with one crane, uh, which was quite foreign to me. Uh, exactly. He had done it with one crane and uh, so he made a drawing for me. But since it was February and very, very cold with frozen snow and ice uh, everywhere uh, on the property, uh, I decided I can do it with uh, the, the uh, tow truck of my garage, my car garage. The, the people uh, had several tow trucks, but the small one the kind that used to in the old days impound your car now they put them up on flat flatbed special uh, car impounding vehicles anyhow so i spoke to the old man and he said no problem on saturday except i have a wedding at 12 o'clock we have to be all done at 12 i said no problem so uh ross and i we started on friday afternoon with a come along uh, anchored at a tree uh, straight out from the, from the boat shed with a come along we started pulling uh, a haluna hull out the frame we had cut that right down to seven and five from this bulkhead in the saloon to the one aft of the galley uh, 12 feet 12 feet of frame were left the rest discarded and we put rollers under the frame and we pulled her out and they come along and we were ready for the t uh, tow truck to arrive the next day i had all my friends there and what we did is we, we put lines over for the tow truck uh with a piece short pieces of uh, planking cedar uh, not to have the, the steel wires uh, mar the, the fiberglass or, or get oil or grease on it, contamination. And we had uh, hold back lines to trees that we controlled like a, on a Samson post. And it worked out perfectly. And when she was nearly right side up, we couldn't hold her anymore. And she went, shoo, shoo, shoo. It was absolutely beautiful. And I had a line from the uh, from the stem, and I could turn her around l l like handling a large animal on a on a on a lead or a leash. I could pull and turn the hull on this frozen ground with one hand, and so we lined her up and started rolling her right side up into the shed. We just put her about halfway in or so, and then it was time for celebration again. That was wonderful. And uh, then after we completed deck, pilot house, lots to do, although much, much, much faster progress than, than the planking. The, the deck uh, was very fast because it's 
tongue and groove longitudinal deck beams by, by the way very very unusual traditional uh, wooden boats have uh, a thwartships uh, deck beams our deck beams are fore and aft making the hull incredibly stiff she does not bend like a modern fiberglass racer with hydraulic backstay you're bending the whole boat and the mast none of that anyhow so we had to truck her about 10 miles to the marina which uh, uh, i had pre prepared for our arrival for launching and everything and uh that went very well we went over a bridge under which we would sail without mast later on across the richelieu river and uh north to saint paul Illinois is the village with a boat yard and uh, they had had a homemade uh, travel lift which had ample capacity for me and uh, we launched her and the m most important by far the most important thing upon launching a new vessel is does she float on her lines and did she float perfectly on her lines an incredible tribute to michelle de ritter uh, we just followed instructions michelle designed uh, the boat and he did an in incredible job she floated perfectly on her lines so that's it we're in the water big celebration big celebration let me tell you all my friends were there open house kind of thing for several days wonderful now the next video i promise will be a boat tour it's the biggest the most numerous request by you folks in the uh, in the uh, remarks next the next video will definitely be a, a tour of the boat below decks as well as on decks okay so Thank you. Stay tuned.